and welcome back to Gardening in the North. Today I wanted to provide you a little bit of an update on the tomato temperature um, situation. So in my last uh, vlog I explained that I was pulling off all of the ripe and green tomatoes from my plants mm -hmm. because the temperature was going to be dropping down to about two, maybe down to one. So I kind of made the decision that I would only pull off half of the tomatoes from the plants. And the reason I decided that is I looked ahead and saw that there was only going to be really one day where the temperature was going to drop extremely low. So I thought, why not pull all of the tomatoes off of the plants that aren't necessarily 100% um, healthy and leave the tomatoes on plants like the, like this one that are extremely healthy. I figured that if I did that, these plants, because they were so healthy, would probably survive it. And I'm really happy to say that they have survived it. And the weather forecast going forward looks like it's going to be great weather, meaning that it's only going to drop down to about six or seven. We're currently in the hill garden and there's a couple things that I need to do in this garden in terms of garden cleanup. And I thought that I would bring you with me just to kind of show you a different area of my garden. So I'm going to be harvesting the rest of my acorn squash. Now they're not huge. They're probably at about a 50% size for that particular variety. However, I've already harvested all the big ones. I harvest them probably about three weeks ago and I was hardening them off inside and decided that you know, while the plants were really healthy, I would pull the bigger ones and let the plants try to grow the smaller ones to uh, a, a better mature size. So I'm going to pull all of, them, all of them today. The other thing I'm going to do is clean up some of my cucumbers, um, the cucumber vines, because they're done producing. And then I'm going to pull all of my onions out. When I first initially planted my onions, I planted 420-ish and probably over the season while they were growing, I've probably used about 70 to 80 of them. I used a bunch to make onion powder in my dehydrator and then I blended it up. If you haven't seen the video, check it out. It's pretty cool. And we're running low on that onion powder. So I am definitely going to be making more of that. So I'm going to pull all those onions out of the ground and I'm actually going to just lay them down on the wood chip mulch that I have in my garden and I'm going to leave them there for a couple days. A couple reasons that I'm doing that is that I'm going to let them naturally dry out with the sun. We're supposed to have even warmer weather tomorrow and like I mentioned earlier I do want to dehydrate some of these onions and I just find that if you dry them out a little bit naturally before you dehydrate them you don't have to dehydrate them as long. So come with me I'm going to clean up my acorn my cucumbers and pull my onions out. So these acorn squash seeds are from Bessie's which is a PEI company and they are called um, winter squash celebration and just look at how pretty they are. A little bit of green with the stripes on it. is. <laughs>
things that I'm actually going to do with these little acorns. I said I'm going to cut them in half and I'm going to take the seeds out and I'm actually going to bake them. And the reason that I bake them as opposed to just putting them in my cold cellar is so that later on in the winter months when I don't have a lot of time, I can just pull out a baggie that has two to three cups of mashed squash in it and add it to our dinner. One of the things I'm going to do with this area here <clears throat> is I'm actually going to, let me just show you here. I'm going to pull a lot of these leaves, which is comfrey. And this is from the Bocking 14 plant. So it is not invasive. It's only, um, you're, you're only able to propagate this if you cut the root and plant the root around your garden. Everywhere you do that, you will get a plant. However, these plants have a tap root that digs straight down into your soil, your ground, and they grab all the nutrients down below that regular plants, your annuals, and some of your perennials can't even get to. And they grow all of that nutrients out into the leaves. So what I'm going to do today is I'm gonna rip up all of the leaves that I have for my comfrey. And you can see that I have a plant here I have a, a nice big one here, a little one that's starting, and I'm just gonna lay them down all along here. And they'll decompose and they'll, you know, blend into the, the wood chip mulch and into the soil. And it'll be one of the ways that I amend this area. Now, before I plant next year, I will have amended this with some new compost so that there is a lot of new fertilizer and nutrients there for the next garden. This is what happens when you forget about the cucumbers that are probably ready and then you find them three weeks later. I wanted to show you this see the little snail that's on the cucumber when we first moved to this property these little snails there were millions of them everywhere on this property to the point where we would come outside the house and find them attached to the actual siding of the house and the garage doors and um, it's crazy because sometimes when it hasn't rained for a long time and you walk on the grass, you can actually hear the crunch as you're walking on them without even realizing it. I want to talk a little bit about my pepper plants. Um, I, I want you to take a look down below here to see that I actually have them planted in pots. So they're all in pots and there's two pepper plants to a pot. And the reason I did this is that pepper plants are a tropical plant and they really do like the heat. In addition to liking the heat, they love their friends and they want to hold hands with their friends. And so I thought, why not plant them in these black, in these black pots in the hopes that the sun would heat up that soil that's in that pot and it would make the pepper plants really happy. So what I did is I cut the bottom of the pots off and I put them into the ground. I filled them up with uh, fresh compost and some um, fertilizer. And then when I planted these plants, I actually put some Epsom salts in the hole and then I put my pepper plants inside. And they have done amazing. 
so amazing that I still have flowers on the pepper plants. And there's tons of them. Like they're, they're all over them. Now, it is a little bit unfortunate because, you know, it's great that they're producing flowers still and more flowers mean more peppers, except that we're really at the end of our growing season. And here in Ontario, Canada, we're really pulling out everything and, you know, harvesting what we can and preserving it and getting ready for the next garden that we're going to have. So I just wanted to show you that. I wanted to share with you one of the experiments that I did in my garden this year that was a success and that I will definitely be doing next year. So this here is where I planted my onions this year. And I think the majority of them really did like it. Uh, I will say that I've already harvested some of the onions that were on this side of the comfrey plant as well as on the other side of it. So again, I'm going to pull all the onions out. I'm going to lay them all in front here where I know that the sun hits it the majority of the day and probably just leave them there for uh, maybe three or four days. I'll keep track of the weather, make sure it's, we're not going to experience any rain. And then I will bring them in and either hang them up to dry or I will slice them up, put them in my freezer or I'm gonna slice them up and make onion powder out of them. One thing I wanna show you is this. You can see the difference in the two onions. They're the exact same kind of onion, except that with the bigger onion, I did a bit of a test with these ones. I actually, halfway through the season, pulled back the wood chips and the soil and exposed the top part of this onion. And look how big it grew compared to the one that I didn't do that to. So I know next year I'm going to be doing that to all of them. harvest here. Take a look. So I'm just going to make sure that they're all single layer. And I'll come out here tomorrow and also kind of move them around just to get them all dried off. Thanks for spending some time in my garden. I wanted to bring you into my kitchen for two seconds just to give you a little bit more detail on what I'm planning on doing with all my acorn squash. So I've sliced them in half and I've taken the seeds out of most of them and I have cooked some of them in the oven. So I will then scoop all this out, place it into a bowl and use a fork to mash it up. And then I will stick it in the Ziploc bags and you can see how thin it is. I'll flatten them out, put them on a cookie sheet or a lid of something else that I have and place them into the freezer until they freeze. And then I can just slip them in and layer them all together or stack them, whichever I want. Um, I label them how many cups and what it is. And so if we have a night where we know we're gonna be busy and we're using the crock pot to cook our, um, our meat for the night, then I can pull out one of these to accompany the meat and it's a quick and easy meal. Just wanted to share that with you um, in case you're ever trying to figure out what you wanna do with your acorn squash. Thanks for sharing your time with me.